Well, it looks like we've got one of those garden videos. And I'm Ben. Welcome to the DIY Homefront. We're going to be working on strawberries today. So let me show you what we got. We got a small stretch right here. And I think what we want to do is take a rain gutter. One rain gutter. Rain gutter. Right there. So we've got to build a support to hold the rain gutter. And we've got to do some modifications. For support, we'll use a 4x4 post, but we've got some unusual angles to deal with first. A weird angle right here. It's not, a, it's not exactly 45 going across, so I'll need to mark that and cut it. I think eventually I want that to be the top. But unfortunately, the 4x4 I have for this project is too short, so that will have to be the bottom. But that's okay because it made it easier to find a way to mark that unusual angle. Now I just have to cut that and we should be good. I tell you what, the more I use these battery operated tools, the more I am impressed with them and the more I like them. Now this is only going to cut about halfway through this 4x4. So I'm going to have to turn it over and line it up and cut it a second time from the other side. I'll start by extending the line from that first cut and then extend the line from the second cut. And then I can draw a line between the two. And this is the line that I'm actually going to need to cut with the saw to get my angle right. This probably isn't the fastest way to make this cut. But it's the easiest way without getting out the miter saw. To be honest, I really only have this one 4x4 to cut. So there's really not much need to get out any more tools than necessary. I'll go ahead and put this 4x4 in place. And then I can determine the height that I want it to be. After that, we'll get the screws out. And I will get this piece securely attached to the post. I'll be using these construction screws that are designed to put ledger boards up against a house when you're building a deck. It will be more than strong enough to hold everything in place. But these construction screws do have a large diameter, so I'm going to drill a pilot hole so we don't split the wood. So if I tried to drill into the 4x4 at the angle that the screw is going to go in, it would want to slide down the wood. So I'll drill into the wood just a little bit. And then I can turn the drill at the angle I need to, to finish off the hole. These construction screws seem to do best if you put them in with an impact driver. So that's what I'll be using. And the tip I'm using came with the screws when I purchased them. Now I'm going to put two of these screws on each end of this post. So I'll go ahead and put the other screw here. And then I can move down to the other end and check to make sure that the post is level before I put in the other screw and secure it into place. Now that the post is marked, I can drill two more holes for my 10 inch construction screws. Now these 10 inch construction screws are made by the same company and out of the same materials, but have a bolt head instead of an Allen key to screw them into place. Now the box door where I got the gutters had two sizes and I went for the larger size and it was made out of metal. Now I'm marking how long I want mine to be, but if you choose to make something similar, make it whatever length you'd like. Now cutting this gutter can be difficult. And if I installed and sold gutters, I'd probably have the right tools to cut this in just one fell swoop, but I don't. So I'm going to show you what I do. Before I can start cutting it, I need to know where to cut. So let's make a line all the way around this. I sort of work my way around the gutter with a square so I can try to make the best straight line I can. This section is the hardest to mark because the tin gutter has a curve to it. And then I'm going to get my tin snips and I'm going to do my best to cut this along that line. And now that it's marked, the only thing left to do is to try to cut it along that line. I'm sure there's somebody that cuts metal that's a lot better at this than I am. But this is the hat I'm wearing today, so this is the job we're doing. 
I was really struggling, so I decided I might be better off just hacking off the half of the gutter I'm not going to use and make it more manageable. Then I could fold the metal back to try to get a better cut or go at it from a different side. But eventually I got this cut. Well now that I've got it finally cut to the right length, I need to put the end cap on it. And I chose to start on the end that had the factory edge because I just thought it would be a little easier. Well if you were using this gutter on your house, you'd want it to be watertight. So I'm sure the end caps would probably be siliconed in and they would be watertight. But we're using this as a planter and it's okay if the water leaks out a little bit because we don't want the plants to be sitting in water. We want it to have some kind of drainage. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and I'm going to crimp the end and I'm going to make sure that it stays on that way. And I feel confident that this crimping technique is going to be more than adequate to hold these end caps on. The end that I cut with the tin snips was a lot more difficult to put the end cap on. I don't know if it was because the metal was jagged or that I had maybe bent it out of shape, but it was just not as easy to get the metal crimped. Now we're going to end up with two of these gutters, one on each side of that brace that we mounted to the posts. So I'm going to repeat this process again with the other half of that gutter, which means we'll have two of these for twice as many strawberries. Well, the gutter is supported by these metal support braces and those braces are supported by a long screw that ends up piercing the gutter and going into the wood. In total, there'll be four braces per gutter and I'll measure out six inches from each end and put a brace there and the other braces will be roughly one foot apart. To make sure the braces stay where I want them, I'll go ahead and start the anchor screw and pierce the gutter with it. It's a really great way to keep the brace positioned where you want it. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other three braces. So I'll take these measurements and go to the 4x4 beam that the gutter is going to be mounted to and drill some pilot holes for each one of these screws. And then I should be able to take this gutter and just attach it straight to that 4x4 beam. The fence won't be a problem at all. It'll just end up being sandwiched between the beam and the gutter. I'll get all these screws started into the beam before I go back and tighten them all down. And you want to be careful not to over tighten these screws when you're using an impact driver. It's easy to do. Here's probably a better view of the crimped end of the gutter. But we're going to go ahead and start putting this up. Well, I still need to drill the pilot holes for my screws. But another way you could locate those pilot holes would be to put the piece in place and start each one of the screws just a little bit and then you can back them off and you'll have a mark where the screw pierced the wood and you'll know where to drill your pilot holes. And here I am drilling those pilot holes out with a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the screws. And now I can attach the other gutter by screwing in the supports. And we now have some strawberry planters. Well, I'll give my wife a chance to plant some strawberries and we'll come back to these gutters. Check those out. They're working just fine, aren't they? You can't see it, but I drilled four holes into the bottom of the gutter and I did it in such a way that it wasn't at the bottom. So when it rains, there should be about a half an inch of water that stays in the bottom of the gutter which will hopefully keep the strawberries watered. Well, there you go. As far as I'm concerned, this project is complete. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in whatever video comes next.